Hey guys, what's up? Stock Retail coming back to you on a Saturday uh, after a very event-filled week. A lot has gone on this week. Um, just global events, market events, a whole lot of moving pieces. And frankly, to the level of um, almost being shocked at how right uh, we really are on the thesis. Um, I've always believed in it. I've always uh, known that things were going to play out, uh, or at least had a lot of confidence things were going to play out in certain ways. But to see it kind of all unfolding all at once was, even for me, a little bit um, eye-opening and shocking. So uh, if you you know witnessed a whole lot of things going on this week and are like, man, what the heck is going on? Uh, I just want to share with you the way I see it and a whole lot of puzzle pieces and moving parts that I believe actually come together and um, confirm a lot of things that we in AMC uh, have been saying for a very long time. So that's just what I want to do today and sort of pick apart the thesis a little bit and tie that into the events of the last week or so since it's been such a big week. Uh, so let's just review what even is that thesis and then you'll start to see and we'll start to kind of dive through. So the first thing is I've talked since 2021 even about tokens as a cheat code, right? So you've seen a lot of news on that in past, let's say the past few months and over the past year or so, and even some news this last week. And so that's part of the thesis is there's, um, you know, something I've called the great unwinding um, and kind of a cleanup of the tokens that were, you know, created the night before the buy button removal way back in 2021 and a whole lot since then. Um, Part of the thesis has been, and this has been a little more recent, let's say over the past nine months to a year, I've had this kind of uh, thought that I started to share uh, based on some DD that Bitcoin kind of becomes this this um, element that dominates fiat is part of also the cleanup and it starts a path to kind of a new way or, in, or a, a, a better, better world. Um, so I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, Part of the thesis has been that the MAG7, especially NVIDIA, and the whole SPY, the S&P 500 as a whole, have been basically pumped up, uh, that their values have been pumped, and in many ways to manage margins, that I've been telling you for a while that longs are also leveraged. You know, we talk about margin calls for shorts, but um, longs have been leveraged, so we're going to talk a little bit about that, and this idea, this sub-bullet here, that shorts don't have cash, they have positions. You know, sometimes we get trolled on like, well... The shorts are, are you know completely profitable on AMC, so really you lost. And I've been saying, hold up, there, you got you got to have context to that. You need cash to cover your positions. So we'll talk about that too, and what I've seen going on this last week. Again, all of this is going to pull the whole week together, and we're going to go through that. Um, part of my thesis has been that the VIX, uh, it's a volatility index, would spike, and so we're going to look at what's been going on with that. Um, that gold and silver would boost Highcroft, which in turn will boost AMC. Some of these things I'm sharing with you are um, one and two and even three years uh, that I've been saying a lot of these things. So uh, it's just real interesting to see it all coming together. You know, these are not necessarily new thoughts, but I saw all of this uh, during the week. And then uh, talked here and there uh, about U.S. Treasuries, basically the yield being up and the price down. So we'll take a look at that. Okay, so there's more to the thesis than that, but those are the things that I saw going on this week in particular, and so we're going to pick that apart. Um, and, and like I said, not necessarily new thoughts, but when you see it all coming together, uh, it, frankly, it even had me fairly emotional yesterday just to see everything coming together and perhaps this step of, of AMC winning. Um, I suppose I didn't put up here also, obviously, AMC becoming profitable, uh, which we are going to talk about as well. So... On tokens and wrapped assets, so you've seen over the past year, you know, Sam going to jail, uh, Binance getting in trouble, pleading guilty, CZ pleading guilty, and he's probably on his way to jail. That um, kind of gets decided, I think, later this month. Um, you have seen news about Uniswap. That was actually, you know, you've heard about the eight quadrillion tokens, and that's been kind of a, a point of a lot of um, debate, you know, were those really just... Um, fractional kind of things. Was there ever really going to be eight quadrillion? Was that even real? But Uniswap definitely comes into play with all the tokens. Uh, and then the SEC investigating Ethereum. I want to say something here. If you are more of a crypto person who has found me, I think there's a there's a misperception, in, in my opinion, that Gary Gensler has been just like cracking down on crypto. 
if you don't know the history of how all of these things were used as part of the fraud of 2021, uh, and the fact that the AMC and GameStop tokens, and, and a few others, by the way, were made the night before the buy button was removed, uh, and then continued to be used, and if you don't understand wrapped assets and how that has all played out, and the relationship even to Ape, you know, some people have asked me why I think that um, Ape was related to all this, and I've never fully explained that. Uh, perhaps I, I still will kind of try to pick that apart someday for you. But if you don't understand all that context, you just think that Gary's been going after crypto, and this is like the machine fighting, you know, freedom or something like that. But if you start to really see all of these dots connect, and you know that Sam was part of basically, effectively, a liquidity fairy, printing shares, um, through the use of tokens and wrapped assets. And if you understand what was happening with Binance, and by the way, even um, some darker stuff in terms of human trafficking and drug trade and you know terrorism and stuff. And then you get into Uniswap and how the tokens show up there and you get into Ethereum and again, wrapped assets and how that all relates. This is all related to the thesis. So to me, this has been confirmation that we were right, that we were basically seeing securities fraud um, through you know, masking things with tokens and wrapped assets and that uh, those chickens are coming home to roost and actually we are winning. So this actually gives me great confidence to see the people who I believe cheated us in AMC in particular um, have been getting caught. And so that that's part of the thesis unfolding is what I'm trying to tell you, which is the theme of the day here. So I said um, U.S. Treasuries, you know, I've been tracking those for a little while, not as long. I've probably talked about those for maybe six months or so that you know you, you probably see sort of the yield kind of going up and the prices of, of the treasuries going down. That's just kind of the relationship. There's an inverse relationship between yield and price. Um, and so I'm showing you a three month view and a five day view. And, and that's gonna matter in a moment. I'm gonna explain that. So we are near all time highs. So if you look at that three month view, you can kind of see um, the yield has just been climbing, 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 climbing. Uh, and that it has to do with macroeconomics, it has to do with inflation, it has to do with the money printer, a whole lot of things going on, and even conflicts, you know, the war. So in fact, you can see when um, Israel retaliated the other day, notice that there was this almost head fake, there was this massive dip, and then kind of a rip back up after. And so we're, again, near, if I was to show you like the one year view, you would see we're, we're basically near kind of all time highs on the 10 year treasury um, yield. And so in general, that also fits the thesis is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, and then speaking of, oh yeah, so there's that, there's that dip and rip. I forgot I'd shown that to you here with just some animation. So speaking of head fakes, similarly, now I want you to keep in mind, so here's what happened with the treasury, you know, Israel retaliates and there's a dip and rip. Here's a tale of two head fakes, something else you would have seen. So when at the same time, this is Israel retaliating right here. Uh, gold ripped and silver ripped. You guys probably were seeing that um, the other night. So like Thursday night. And by the way, Thursday night, as I watched a lot of things happening in markets, I that night was already telling my wife, oh my gosh, I, everything is happening that we predicted. Um, and I'll, you'll start to see that as I continue to go through the rest of this video. So if we were saying, um, actually, let me, let me not skip ahead. So you, you saw this rip and dip, so almost the opposite of what I just showed you with treasury yields, a bit of a head fake. And then what's interesting, the opposite happened with Bitcoin. So Bitcoin at that time, I believe was basically attacked and you can see dipped, but I, I actually think it was an attack that failed. I think they used the cover of this conflict to try to stop Bitcoin before the halving. Um, you know, it's a bit of a conspiracy theory, but it's something I believe, and I'll talk through that a little bit more. So this is a, this is a, a screenshot from Thursday night. Um, I'm here on the West Coast, so it was, you know, like 9.30 at night, my time. But you can see this is midnight here, uh, midnight 30 on the East Coast. And so you can see in a matter of three hours, both of these are about a three-hour window, gold spiked and then went back down. Uh, Bitcoin effectively, I don't quite want to say crashed, but it went down pretty hard to some pretty key support levels. Like, I believe actually had it gone much lower, you start to get probably algos and HFT, you know, high frequency trading that kicks in and day traders. And perhaps you could have seen a significant run down, especially if the algos had kind of taken over and seen that it was under some uh, key support levels. And then 
effectively, I was talking to someone that night who, let's just say, has uh, insight into some things, who was saying, hey, I'm seeing some big buys coming in. And by the way, actually, I was buying the dip myself, and now I'm thankful that I did, because you can even see this screenshot, uh, you know, Bitcoin came back up to about 62 and a half thousand. I think as of the time of me filming this video, we're somewhere kind of 65 and north of there. Um, but you can see then buying kicked in and sort of put support in underneath that and came back up. So here's the point. I think, and now, you know, speculation alert here, that before the halving was happening, someone was using the cover of, of everything going on with the conflict as a chance to try to prop gold up and, and smash Bitcoin down. Uh, you know, I can't prove that, but I'm just telling you my belief. Either way, all of this relates to the thesis. We're gonna pull that together too in a minute. So you saw really three head fakes. You saw treasuries dip and rip. You saw gold rip and dip. And then you saw Bitcoin dip and rip. Interesting to watch. Um, the reason, part of the reason I believe all that about Bitcoin, um, and, and look, I'm, a, I'm like a tiny player in all this, so it's not about me, it's more about a bunch of things that all happened at the same time. Uh, during the week, so Bitcoin was kind of attacked all week, so you can kind of see two low points during the week. The second one was that moment when Israel attacked and then Bitcoin kind of came back up. Um, the first one was kind of earlier in the week, and I honestly believe there's some players who just, um, look, they're even public about it, so that's not conspiracy theory. Like J uh, JP Morgan, so Jamie Dimon, is on the record that he hates Bitcoin. The bankers do not like Bitcoin. They they want control, and this is part of why I have um, come around to it more and more myself. You know, I want a world where um, uh, my children and my grandchildren aren't dealing with all that the bankers uh, do to control the money supply. Um, sorry, guys, this got cut off a little bit by some formatting, but I'll just kind of read this to you. So. What happened this week for me also was I started to get attacked pretty hard on Bitcoin. And I talked about that in a recent video, which is interesting because, you know, I'm kind of, um, not kind of, I am deeply a, an AMC account, have been for over three years. We're getting close to three and a half years now. Uh, I believe strongly in what we're doing. I believe strongly in the company. And I believe strongly that there is fraud in markets and we're here standing up against it and that we're going to win. And um, so that's why I'm showing you all this thesis. Well, but interesting, as I've come to sort of discuss Bitcoin a little more um, and the reasons I believe in it and the reasons I'm even telling my own children to put their savings in it, um, I have started to get attacked on that. And this week in particular, um, all at once, some larger attacks started happening on me. And it wasn't like just... Listen, if you're listening to this and you just disagree with my logic or my thesis and you come to me respectfully and, you know, with information and data and whatever, and we have like a respectful conversation, that's all good. Uh, but these were people who were flat out, you know, trying to say things like, uh, you know, are, you're a pumper, which, by the way, you know, think about the size of Bitcoin globally. What's little old me going to like, how could you possibly really pump it? That's not happening, um, especially with the size of my account. Um, but okay, you're a pumper. Why are you getting retail in at all time highs? Are you taking buy pressure away from AMC? And I don't mind talking about this stuff out loud because frankly, it's just, you couldn't be further from the truth. So that was all kind of going on. Then even, um, some of these new accounts and I, I put quotes around new because one or two of them, I kind of recognize pretty much the way that they're talking, the way that they're approaching me, that really these are just alt accounts from people I've blocked in the past. And they just come back with a new alt account that I haven't blocked yet. Um, so really the shorts were coming after me, uh, people who don't want to see the new world. They don't want to see a new way. They want the old ways of the banking system and the bankers, uh, and their, you know, ability to control all of us and control economics. Um, well, so you note the timing though, you know, they really ramped up their attacks against me while they were pushing Bitcoin down. I actually thought, I actually think they thought uh, they being, there are some, I've, I've talked about manipulators among us, I've talked about sort of banksters among us and large traders among us. Um, I think that their networks knew that this attack was coming and thought, hey, this is a great time to sort of rob this guy of credibility. If we attack him on this front while on the money side, Bitcoin is being attacked. I think they thought they were going to win, honestly. And so this is another reason, actually, I'm so bullish this week. Because part of the great unwinding thesis that I've had, you can find a whole bunch of videos on that, find a bunch of tweets, just use the hashtag, the great unwinding, 
Um, I've been talking about it for quite a while. Part of my thesis on this unwinding of the tokens is Bitcoin needed to win. Um, and that has, I've been, you know, no, no, uh, made no qualms about that. I've been very open about that. That I believe Bitcoin would beat uh, fraud and corruption. And I believed that that was going to force some things in terms of cleaning up the tokens. And that's very, very bullish for AMC. So that's also why I believe I'm under attack on that front. They do not want to see that happen. Um, you know, so it, time's going to show whether I'm right or wrong. Like, the, I'm not going to make some big, you know, strong argument about that. I'm just telling you that's my thesis. And then time's going to prove me wrong or right on that. But what I'm actually showing you through all this video is how many things we've gotten right, how many things I've gotten right. Um, so that's going to be real interesting, too. So one of the things, now I'm going to start to make sense of the week a little more, too. You know, you saw... NVIDIA, you saw the SPY dip real hard yesterday. And so some of you might be going, oh my gosh, what's going on? Is this a market crash or whatever? Um, I want you to go back. And so even here's just a couple examples. Like here's a tweet from me in March. Here's a tweet from me all the way back last December where I was trying to tell you, um, and, and you can find other information. In fact, I think I'm going to show one here in a minute that margin is not just used for shorts. So when you talk about leverage, leverage is just... Um, basically borrowing to increase your position. Uh, so margin or leverage is also used on the long side. In fact, in 2020, I was trading on margin and I was along. I didn't short anything. I've never shorted anything. Um, I was along and I was making a lot of money because that was a mega bull market, you know, post kind of the COVID crash. There was a lot of money to be made and I was using leverage myself. So it can be okay. Like, and I've got a whole article I'm going to show you that um, I would just caution you um, to be very careful about using margin. I don't currently trade on margin at all. I'm in only cash accounts because I don't want people loaning out my AMC shares. Uh, but there's a time and a place for it. So it's not like leverage itself is not the problem. But what if uh, NVIDIA, the MAG7, the entire S&P 500 was effectively propped up to support people's margin positions, to keep them from having to cover their shorts? And so I believed that this market was effectively a huge pump and and because of that, that it was a big bubble. And so I was telling you that in December and, and here's that piece too I talked about earlier about you know why haven't shorts closed? Well, I don't believe shorts have a lot of cash. I believe they have positions and they have leverage. And so you know it'd be a struggle for them to go get all the cash to close all of their AMC positions between wrapped assets and tokens and, and all of the shares we've seen that they're even self-reporting um, having shorted. It's going to be a real expensive proposition. And so uh, I was trying to warn you that I believed NVIDIA was a bubble. And I believed, really, frankly, the whole S&P 500 was a bubble. Uh, and I've been warning you on that for a long time. And so I want you also to ask, as you look at this, um, who was warning you and who was pumping you into these things? And some some who pumped you into these things have, you know, kind of claimed to be these super smart people that apes should follow. And I would just be real careful. And that's why I was warning you that this was coming. And sure enough, now it came. I mean, yesterday alone, NVIDIA was down 10%. Um, in fact, let's just look here. So if you look from the top uh, of NVIDIA to yesterday's close, NVIDIA is down almost a half a trillion dollars. So if you had bought at the high when people were pumping you in, you know, you're way down. Um, and, and the company as a whole. So if you think of whoever was on the wrong side of that trade, people are down $450 billion, at least on paper. And some people have actually sold and, and realized those losses. If you look at the S&P 500, same thing about the same time frame. Uh, it's down two and a quarter trillion dollars or $2,400 billion in terms of total market cap of the S&P 500. I mean, that's pretty crazy, right? And I was telling you this was coming. But the bullish side of things is this all relates to the AMC thesis that, you know, go back and here's why I was telling you uh, shorts don't have cash to close. They have positions. Well, so eventually to cover, they're going to have to sell their positions is what I was telling you. So I was trying to say, hey, the reason this is a bubble is when they're going to have to start covering some things. Uh, and by the way, they shorted Bitcoin too. So that's part of what I think was happening is they lost that fight against Bitcoin. So they're having to kind of cover their positions. Well, to cover it, they're selling longs. I'm going to show you again an article in a minute where you can go read about how margins work and it'll, it'll help you understand what's really going on. Okay, so I warned you, it happened. 
So all of these things, you know, I'm just showing you the receipts of, it's not like a big brag. It's just actually, hey, if I'm right, that ought to make you pretty excited because what else might I be right about? And you guys, if you followed me a while, you know my point of view. So here's the thing though, <clears throat> those leveraged positions, I don't think we're done yet. So here was a tweet yesterday from an account out there. <coughs> Pardon me. I don't know them super well, but I do follow them. Uh, I'm just kind of like a, a I don't know, a, a, almost like a news ticker account. Um, you can see from the Fed Financial Stability Report, leverage at head funds, hedge funds had reached its highest level since data collection began. So if things start flipping the wrong way on some people, you're going to see some wild moves in the market because the, again, I'm going to show you that article. I, I just encourage you strongly to understand how margins actually work. Um, and when you're leveraged and you get the wrong way, think of it like a seesaw and a, or a teeter totter. And if it gets out of balance, you've got to put something um, on one side or take something off the other side to get it back in balance. And that's going to have to do with selling a lot of positions and covering a lot of positions. So I, I think this all means we're moving ever closer to winning against all the manipulators. Um, another part of the thesis that I said, so I said gold would propel Highcroft and effectively Highcroft would support AMC. So you can go back and find, this is a year ago, a little over a year ago, there's a video I pointed you to a few times called The Pieces. Um, where I kind of spelled out, and so you can see one of the graphics here was just um, all of the parts of what Adam had done had positioned us for this moment. And this moment is literally what we're now living, like everything that happened this week, I believe Adam had positioned AMC perfectly for what I saw com coming in the total market. And I think I'm just trying to help you see too, like, yes, I may have been early. I was telling you about this a year ago, but just think through like there i really believe there are you know fake accounts out there whose job it is is to get you into the wrong investments basically and make money for for their bosses and then there's someone like me who's been out here and i told you a year in advance or with all these other things you know had you let's say bought puts on nvidia because i told you it was going down or had you been buying into highcroft or gold or something um you could have made a lot of money listening to the right voices. I think that's part of what I'm trying to say. And so here enough, or sure enough, uh, in the last three months, obviously Highcroft, if I zoomed out here, it's still red since AMC bought it. So let's be careful. Um, I, I don't like when people cherry pick timelines on, on charts. That's actually part of what happened to me this last week. People picked like one day charts for Bitcoin, whereas I started talking about it when it was still in the 30s. Um, you know, if people had listened to me on that, you'd be up 150% or something. Um, people pick a, like a two hour chart to say, see, I was right. Well, that that's a little ridiculous. But what I'm saying is directionally, things are starting to happen. So over the last three months, that's what I'm showing you, uh, you know, Highcroft being up 75%. Uh, things are starting to kind of move in the direction that we said they would, which matches again the thesis. The VIX, so I had started talking about the VIX somewhat recently. Um, something I've tracked really our, our whole journey. I just hadn't talked about it much. So in terms of those receipts, uh, those are a little more recent, but I've said that's part of the thesis to watch the VIX. I think we're going to see it spike. Uh, can't promise that for sure, but uh, I do believe that's probably part of what's all playing out. And sure enough, you can see over the last kind of couple of weeks, uh, a significant spike in the VIX. It's, it's just a volatility index. So that has also played out. So what I'm really just showing you all the things that have shaked out this last week, have shaken out this last week, uh, fit the AMC thesis and frankly fit the Bitcoin thesis. So if you are pro AMC, you're actually, you should be kind of going, whoa, this is amazing. It's playing out exactly as people, um, at least the truth tellers have, have been saying it would play out. So that, ought, it makes, again, it makes me pretty bullish. So speaking of how it would play out, you can go back um, this is an article on Reddit that I wrote two years ago, and it kind of has all of this. Um, and like I said, that's a little bit more deep on margins and tells you how it actually works. I once got margin called for, for a dollar. So you can go in there and you can read, read that. I had to put a dollar in, um, you know, to make my margin call. So that was kind of a, a funny moment. So margin calls, you know, that don't always mean like literally every short's going to get covered or something like that. You know, like I said, on, on that call for me, um, of course I was long but I either had to put a dollar in or sell enough to kind of cover a dollar's worth of positions. Um, you, you can understand I just put a dollar in. But anyway, so that'll tell you all about how margins work. It'll also tell you all of these different pieces at play. Um, I talk, you know, about 
uh, well, just all the pieces. Um, so between that, I would even say, just go back to this video, the pieces, you can even see like, look, if I highlight here, you know, it's over a year ago and I said, hey, gold, silver, and crypto are gonna run. Well, what's been happening? Gold, silver, and crypto have been running. Um, I talked about how the Fed's gonna keep printing money. Um, so all these things are even before I really started talking about Bitcoin and stuff. It just was all logical. If you kind of pieced everything together, you could kind of know what was going to happen. And also part of it was, hey, as Adam has cash, he's going to be paying down debt, um, which is also what you've been seeing. So just been kind of nailing all that. Uh, but again, if you want to go deeper, kind of see, because this also ha has a thing that points you to how the whole end game, I think, plays out for AMC. There's a little bit of a visual on that. So you could go find that. Um, all right, so what else? Um, and actually, we're, we're kind of already done here, guys. So first off, just a fun story. Literally yesterday, uh, my wife and I went to a track meet for our daughter. Um, it's been a really fun season. She, last year, had actually had a, a pretty big injury. She, she literally separated a tendon from her hip. So that was incredibly painful and a long journey for her to get better. Um, she's still in high school, so you know it was it was hard to watch as a parent. But I've been so proud of her because she worked through. She did some uh, fairly painful uh, kind of recovery process, but you know worked her way back. So we we went and got to see her run in her track meet yesterday on just a gorgeous day here in Oregon. And on the drive home, an eagle literally flew over our heads. Uh, I'm not making that up. I'm serious. We we're, we're driving through the Oregon wine country, and I don't know that I've ever seen an eagle in that area. Like I, you can see them at the Oregon coast sometimes. Um, you know, I live here in the Northwest. There's certainly some eagles around and I have seen them um, or in the mountains, but I hadn't seen them here in the wine country. So it was really cool. My wife and I were like, oh my gosh, look at that. And so I just took it as like a fun thing. If you want to believe it's some kind of fun sign of, you know, like AMC soaring someday, you know, like the wings of an eagle or whatever, just having fun with that. But, um, you know, I do believe that's coming. So, you know, what else on the thesis? Uh, first of all, I say Bitcoin for decades. Um, I just want to continue to clarify, and I have said many times, my thesis on Bitcoin and why I'm getting my children into it um, and my, you know, my mom, um, it's not about days or weeks or even months for me with Bitcoin. I'm not talking about trading it. I'm talking about what I think is the future of the entire macro economy, what is the future of fiat currencies, what is the future of being able to buy bread and car insurance and houses. Um, and I think that people who essentially buy Bitcoin and just kind of ignore it and keep it, uh, will come back to it in a period of years and decades and be very thankful they did that. That's my point of view. Again, um, if you've got a respectful disagreement with that, I have no problem with that. There are people I DM with who disagree with me. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to suffer trolls. You will be blocked if you come with disrespect because I've been attacked for three and a half years. I, I know what that looks like. And I just, I have a very short leash on being attacked uh, because I know who's doing that too. And it's some very bad people. Uh, I believe AMC profits are coming. I've shown you plenty of videos on that. Someone asked me recently, when am I going to do uh, the Q1 sort of forecast? I usually do that just shortly before the earnings call. So sometime real soon, I'll do that. Um, I'll show you what I believe happened in Q1, what's happening in Q2. And you guys know, if you've watched any of my recent videos, um, I believe it's time to be thinking about Q3 and Q4. And, you know, Q3 starts already in July. Or really, honestly, um, if you think about cash flows being real time, uh, or, you know, just think about money coming into the cash register, or money coming into the bank account, um, look at all the movies in sort of May, June, July, and we start to turn into a much stronger place for AMC. So even before Q3, uh, we, we're we're turning much more positive. Uh, so I feel very gr good about AMC. And uh, just to wrap up, the fact that all of these things, crypto, precious metals, NVIDIA, the SPY, US treasuries, the VIX, AMC's profits, Bitcoin, the fact that everything is moving as predicted, that's a whole lot of predictions to be happening all at once in exactly the way that I've been saying they would happen. So it has me really, really bullish on AMC. I cannot promise ever, and I never will, when we will squeeze. I do believe we will squeeze. Um, you know, whether that is a, a radical sort of violent squeeze or whether it's like a, over a few years squeeze, I still can't promise that either. I have a point of view. We'll, we'll have to watch that play out. But I believe we're at a very, very good place. 
and that effectively good guys are winning, bad guys are losing. And you know that I believe we will win. So let's go.